guys, welcome to our lobster, not really a dissection, it's more of just looking at a live lobster so we can see all the external structures. So we bought this lobster from Green Turtle. They got a nice uh, tank, so does Publix. But here's our lobster. I guess we'll call him Larry because everybody calls lobsters Larry. Um, this is about a pound and a half lobster and it's really, really awesome to see lobsters instead of crayfish because they are bigger and you can definitely see the appendages better, the body segments better. Um, so I kind of wanted to go through all the different body segments of the lobster, all the different appendages because they are all very structure and function based. Uh, and kind of go through the whole entire lobster with you guys. So, start off, we have these huge two claws here. They are called chelipeds. They're spelled like chelipeds, but they are chelipeds. Um, these are obviously for defense and also for grabbing any food and such. But I want you to look at the teeth. These are actually called the teeth or the molars of the chelipeds, and they should look different to you guys. Let me actually take off one of these rubber bands. Don't pinch me. All right. Hopefully you're noticing a difference that this chelipen has more like molars. Um, these are for crushing and these teeth right here are more like your canines and they're more for shredding. So once again, different structures for different functions. That way, because the two chelipeds are different, this allows the lobster to really have some defense, but also be able to eat whatever it needs to eat for crushing and then for shredding or ripping or tearing. All right, those are your two chelipeds. Really awesome and yummy. Sorry, guy. Um, we'll be potentially eating him a little bit later. Um, right in the middle of his eyes is this sharp pointy structure called the rostrum. And the rostrum has its own little spines on it. It's mostly for defense and, mo and for protection of the eyes. Um, these two things right here, these little two tiny pieces are called antennules. There's antennules and there are antennas. The antennules are smaller and they are more sensory based when they're getting close, when something is getting close to the mouth. The antennas are longer. You can see this guy actually had a broken one right here. But the antennas, he's gonna swing them back and forth and he's gonna be able to feel his surroundings. So I'm moving this right now, but he's able to figure out that the dish, how big the dish is based off of the feeling from his antennas. Lots of nerves going through these things. He has two stalked compound eyes. He's kind of like winking at you. He likes to move them. But notice how the stalked compound eyes kind of get pulled underneath the rostrum. That is a nice protection. Um, for them. Okay, so that's your head region. Um, looking at the different body segments, right here is one whole segment. This is the cephalothorax. So cephalo referring to head and thorax is thorax. So cephalothorax, the head thorax is one, um, one unit. You could actually see right here is the cervical groove. This is kind of like the dividing line between the head and the thorax. The other body segment he has is his abdomen, and this is the tail of the lobster that everybody really likes to eat. Sorry again, dude. Um, this is the abdomen, and I've kind of unfurled it, but he likes to have it nicely um, underneath him, okay? And then you have this nice tail that is nicely flayed out. It's all about surface area, okay? So this is the abdomen. This portion right here is called the telson. The telson is really similar to that horseshoe crab telson, that long tail. Um, but this is not used for um, a rudder per se. It's just kind of like the middle extension of the abdomen. And then alongside, you can see, you could fold it under or you could fly it out. These are called Europods, okay? The Europods are for increasing surface area. When a lobster walks along the sand, it opens its Europods and kind of uses it as balance and drags behind. Or lobsters, when they're trying to get away, lobsters actually swim backwards. And the way that they do this is they fan out their uropods and then they will very quickly flick their abdomen closed like that, okay? They'll go flick and they will get go backwards. So if you ever go lobstering down in the Keys, um, you will be looking for these antennas sticking out of rocks. Um, usually they are going to swim themselves backwards and go back in the hole or the rocky crevice and that's what they will do that way. All right. Okay, let's look at the mouth parts because mouth parts on arthropods are quite unique. Let me pull them this way. Okay, all right. So we've got our antennules and our two antennas. Um, there are three different types of mouth parts that are in here. They all start with the letter M so it can get pretty um, strange, but what I've noticed is the size of the mouth part is also referring to the size of the word. You have maxilla, you have mandibles, and you have maxilla pets, okay? Maxilla are these tiny little things. They've got a couple different ones, okay? Notice these are more paddle-shaped right here. The whole reason why they're paddle-shaped structure and function 
is so they could actually create a water flow and bring water and plankton. You'll see lots of little things moving. If this guy was in water, they would all be moving right here. We've got a couple different maxilla. Right here are your mandibles. They have like a yellowish structure. Um, kind of pulling on one right here. These are your external jaws. These guys are in subphylum mandibulata because they have mandibles for their mouth parts. Okay, what happens is these um, these bigger things are called your maxilla pens. Notice on the inside of these maxilla pens, they've got another ridge of teeth. Okay, so these guys also like to eat worms. So for example, if it was eating a worm, the maxilla pens would be holding the worm. Um, you would also have these first pair of walking legs. Notice they're biramus or V-shaped. But the worm would be held by these maxilla pens. It would be crushed and chomped essentially by these ridges of teeth. Then it would be moved towards the mandibles where these are external jaws and it would crush it. And your maxilla are just whirling and swirling all around so they can create a nice water current. So maxilla, smallest word and smallest uh, structure. Mandibles are your, inter or your external jaws, I'm sorry. Maxilla pens the biggest word and the biggest mouth structure. All right, so that's the mouth. Next, moving down, this is the ventral side of him. These are his walking legs, tickle, tickle, okay? He is actually having 10 pairs of legs. Okay, I'm gonna go to the other side. The chelipeds are considered his first pair, okay? Then you've got pair number two, you have pair number three, pair number four, and pair number five. So he has 10 pairs of walking legs. If you notice, the first three pairs of walking legs have pinchers. Those are considered biramus. So they are used for walking and also grabbing food and passing it towards the mouth. The last two pairs of walking legs are not biramus. So these are purely for walking. The, another word for walking legs are periopods. Then down here on the abdomen section, you have somerets. Somerets are also biramus or V-shaped. Okay, another word for somerets are pleopods. So walking legs are periopods, somerets are pleopods. Um, somerets are used for swimming generally, but if it's a female, they will be used to hold the eggs underneath it. Okay, and then you have down here, once again, this is the underside of the telson and then the uropods. Something else that I noticed for appendages they actually, if you go from anterior head side to posterior tail side, it actually goes in alphabetical order. So let me show you. You have, as anterior as you can get, antennules and antenna. Then you have your chelipeds, starting with a C. Then moving down, you have your periopods, which are your walking legs. Then you have your pleopods, which are your somerets. Then you have your telson, and then uropods. So literally everything goes lovely in a, an alphabetical order for us. Um, hopefully that makes it easier for you guys to remember. Um, but let's see, one more thing that you should have noticed. He's very fuzzy all over the place. He's got these, what we call sensory bristles. These sensory bristles are along his mouth parts, along all the walking legs and also his telson and uropods. That allows him to also taste the, um, the environment surrounding him. All right. Um, also in between all the joints is this flexible membrane you can kind of see that is called your articular membrane you had to write about that in one of your notes okay it's not as uh, strong as the exoskeleton but it's definitely a thick enough membrane so it keeps him protected okay so that is your lobster and um, pretty cool mouth structures when you see them living he's trying real hard to move um, so Larry the lobster says bye and he says, sting em, scorps. <laughs>